There are big name in musical instruments, no doubt, but not quite such a big noise in ukuleles. Keep watching. Yeah, welcome back. It's got a ukulele review day as ever. This is the summary video review that accompanies the written review, which you'll find on the link below. Go and have a look at the website. You'll find a lot more information. You'll find all my other reviews and loads of other stuff there as well. Uh, the festival calendar and club directory and you name it. Um, as ever, thank yous running across the bottom of the screen. I have to do this every week because it's important because without these people who make donations, I couldn't do this every week because I don't get paid by the brands, they would be adverts. So my eternal thanks go out to those people. And you can also help me out, as you know, by clicking subscribe and subscribing to the channel. That'll help get the word out there a little bit more. Right, okay, here's a brand featured many times on Got a Ukulele before, and I think I'm probably quite well known for being quite sniffy about them. It's nothing personal, I love the brand. I've got an electric guitar sat over there, which I absolutely adore. I think they make wonderful guitars. I just think they kind of don't know what they're doing when they make ukuleles. I've reviewed a few of them. Some of them have been half decent, but none of them have wowed me, and some of them have really, really appalled me. This one was launched in the summer, and some of my readers asked me to take a look at it, so I got hold of one. This is the Fender Avalon Tenor. Um, and it's in kind of one of it, down at the cheaper end of the Fender range, the entry level range. Uh, I saw Fender wrote on their website that this is the big brother to the Fender venice soprano my heart sunk when i saw that because i've reviewed the venice soprano and it was awful <sighs> so okay basic instrument made of all laminate made of all laminate basswood that's linden wood lime cheap soft plywood uh completely painted so i don't can't really tell you much about the construction but we'll come on to that in a moment so it's a tenor scale laminate box um comes in this one in this black which i went for because Johnny Cash fan. I rather like the look of the black actually, I do. Also comes in Fender colours like Surf Green and Chili Red, which look quite decent as well. There's also a Sunburst and a Natural, which I think look absolutely hideous. So black it was for this one, but you do have choices. Uh, the bridge, typical Fender slot style, they call it their no tie bridge. It's a slot bridge, come on. Made of walnut, uh, quite tidy, fairly tidy, a bit scruffy down one end fitted with a straight top plastic saddle. Um, I think that walnut is too pale for the black. I think it really stands out. It should have been a dark black wood to blend in with the black of the body. So I don't like that. Okay, no other decoration other than this cream binding and it needs that cream binding. It would look odd without it. But I would just say this finish, this satin paint, if when you really start to go looking, there are ripples and ridges uh, and a hell of a lot of pooling around the end, end of the fingerboard. Uh, it's quite scruffy actually, in places, uh, and I noticed that. Inside, very basic, basic laminate box, bit of bracing, linings are not notched. Uh, I don't think there's any linings on the top edge at all. No, there isn't, so I don't know what's holding that on. Um, and a bit of scruffy wood shavings as well. All right. The neck, made of NATO wood, another cheap material. Tapers down, always chunky. Fenders, always chunky and uncomfortable up here. It's 33 mil at the nut, 26 from G to A, so that's too narrow for my personal tastes. Your mileage may vary. Fitted with a walnut fingerboard, which again, like the bridge, I think looks too pale with the black. It really stands out. May look better with other colors. In fact, I think it will, will but I think it looks odd here. It's also really cheap wood. I've got little pits and holes and knots. I don't want a knot in my fingerboard wood. Uh, it's really scruffy in places. Uh, very, very scruffy. Edge bounding cream. And I don't know how you edge bind something and then still have the frets feeling a bit sharp. Okay, position dots face out at five, seven, 10, double 12th, or on the 15th and black dots down the side. Incidentally, if you're gonna use black paint and paint up against white, You've got to do it neatly because it looks really messy when you overpaint. And that's there's loads of that going on down the side of this neck. It's just all a bit slapdash, isn't it? But it is cheap. We'll come on to why. Plastic nut. <coughs> the setup of the nut is okay. The setup of the saddle is far too high. It's well above three millimeters at the 12th. I've said enough about what I think about the head, Fender headstock. 
I, I, I know why it exists. I know it's iconic. I know they use it on their guitars. I know it's helpful to have the strings straight. I just think it looks really odd on a small instrument. I just can't get past it in my own mind. Just a regular headstock would look better. So there we are. Purely, purely subjective. Uh, the tuners, oh, I'm not being subjective here. These are really cheap. Open gears, really grindy when they turn. They're all different tensions. Very, very poor quality. They don't specify what the strings are. They just say tenor strings, so I don't know what they are. Uh, and it comes in with a street price in the UK of about £90. So it's not a lot of money. But I've played a lot of £90 instruments. Uh, so it's got a lot to live up to. And I've, I've played a lot of £90 instruments with better finishing than this as well. Made in China. It's not heavy, 585 grams, balance is okay as well. Um, and it feels, generally speaking, it feels pretty solid in, in the hands. Um, everywhere, I, look, I think it's because it, it is black, everywhere I look I'm finding something wrong with the finish. Um, but let's have a, have a play. These tuned strings, by the way, are also very, very flabby. So it'll probably go out of tune in this review. do my best to keep it in tune but will point out if there's any intonation issues which I'll be able to check right okay tone and volume and sustain and all that stuff let's do that first right volume uh, volume's good volume's all right sustain isn't Oof. it falls off really quickly which means it's not going to be a very expressive instrument very very strident sound that way it's playing it works as a ukulele but there's not a not a lot of character very very thin and a bit one trick pony so that's your strumming F finger picking you know I use that word strident I'm getting tangled up in the strings instrument but you know if I was spending 90 quid I'd be getting something from Baton Rouge or companies like that or I'd be looking at those Chinese Kueas because they are they sound much nicer than this this is incredibly generic sounding it, it's, it's one of those really hard ones for me to review because you know for, for a first time somebody would listen to this and think well that's all right it just doesn't excite me Nothing about it makes me want to pick it up, and I think it's, I think it's really because that sustain is so poor. So it's uh, right, so that couple, so very very uh, passable but very very average tone and playability, uh, coupled with quite a bit of glaring scruffiness um, and uh, bits that annoy me. I think you. The only value you're getting is that name 
Um, and as I said at the top of this review, I'm not entirely sure that name means much when you come to the ukulele world. They just happen to be in it. I, don't, I, don't, I can't think of an instrument they make that's famously good. Um, the Fender, Avalon, Tenor, all laminate, linden wood, very cheap, uh, very basic, pretty scruffy, and not particularly heartwarming on the tone, to my ears at least, anyway. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm back next weekend. It is the 13th anniversary um, of Got a Ukulele. That's not a milestone uh, year, 13, uh, but it just happened to fall on the weekend, so I noticed it. So I think I've got something extremely nice coming your way, hopefully. Uh, couriers, um, depending. So have a very good week ahead. Look after each other. Thanks for your ongoing support, and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.